I meet one of our clients. Uh, he is a former hacker from Deutsche Telekom. And he works now as a security officer. Security music. Responsible for what I would call the IT security, but he wants to make pretty clear that IT and security are two different topics that you shouldn't mix up. I have a hacker in the house. Ex-hacker. Ex-hacker. Ex-hacker, that's very important. So, just for a quick introduction, Sven and I met uh, last year. He's the former, very first hacker of Deutsche Telekom. Yeah, and to steal data, obviously, so... Okay, you had the permission. That's yeah, yeah, I had the permission for sure. And what he told me then, what I didn't know, is you actually organized the Cyber Security Summit yeah. as a part of the Munich, the yeah. Munich Security yeah. Conference. With some colleagues with some of your colleagues, yeah. which is an important security conference with like people who are officially responsible for the security of the President of the United States. Yeah, uh, Howard Schmidt. Howard Schmidt. Ehud Barak was there for a keynote speech. So a lot of people where you would say, isn't security IT stuff actually? No, it's not. That's not true. Um, at the end, the CEO is accountable for security because security affects all dimensions of the company. Unsecurity could kill your business like we had, we had a couple of weeks ago an example here in Germany. They lost um, nearly 40 million yeah. Whale, euros. whaling, right? So something through like whaling. So what happened is that they simulated one of the leaders or a couple of leaders then to transfer money to different accounts. So from your experience, you have now quite a broad experience when it comes to security. What changed from the old days to today, and why is it now even more C-level business? Usually we try to penetrate um, the data center, the perimeter, because all the data was stored on a, mm -hmm. on a server. But today, the important information is on the computer of the CEO, of a guy from the security department, or from, some, from someone from the financial department, and it's based on Windows mainly. So it's very, very easy to reach in the Windows computer, and then you steal credentials. You elaborate, you try to find other weak points in the network. Because if you're on the computer, you're part of the system. Why is it so easy to, one, break into a Windows computer, and two, then to pick the CEO, for example? So, the picture is this. Uh, you have a given software, let's say Acrobat, mm -hmm. which is quite big software, a big vendor, right? And you would expect normally, mm -hmm. yeah, f***ing secure, like hell. But, but it's a complex software. Mm -hmm. So, uh, let's assume this, you forgot to install patches on a weekly basis or monthly basis, right? Mm -hmm. And the smart kids from, let's say, China or Russia, right? They write exploits, tools to, to exploit their vulnerability in the software. And you can download them by the internet? No. So, As they like exploit itself, can... yes. Yeah, sure. Uh, they install this on web servers. Mm -hmm. So you go to a web server with your Chrome browser, which is maybe also affected, or your Firefox, or your crappy Internet Explorer, mm -hmm. right? And then you're infected. Mm -hmm. And you don't even know that something happened with your computer. And that means for the attacker, he can use your credentials, your computer. And let's take the CEO. Usually CEO or staff member of the security team, they have more privileges in the, in the network, right? So what I understood is that when you run in an, in an old system, like let's say a Windows environment, which many companies run, that makes it easy to enter. And I remember the first time when we met and I thought, oh, he's a former security um, guy from Deutsche Telekom. So he's most likely not too much into cloud tools because many people think in the beginning when they talk about cloud, they say, oh, that's weak because my data is somewhere else. And you said, I, I actually want to have a cloud tool running. Exactly. So what were the reasons? And we, I remember back then we talked about Office 365 versus Google Apps, for example. Mm -hmm. So um, in my experience, I mean, I refer to the Telecom, right? One of the biggest cloud providers in the world, mm -hmm. right? We have multiple customers with high security requirements from the automotive sector, finance sector, and so on. And they put the barriers very high, Yeah, the security requirements. So what a cloud provider usually do, 
they, they take the highest security requirements of the most important customers and they apply the requirements to all other customers as yeah. well. Because it's one platform at the end. The other point is, usually small and medium enterprise companies, they don't have the capabilities for prevention, mm -hmm. detection and reaction. So basically something happened, I would try to detect where it happened and then I try to and react to that and what happened. Okay. And usually companies would put maybe 90% into prevention, 5 into into detection and the last 5 into reaction. This is changing now because there's no parameter anymore because of cloud. You don't have a wall in front of your door anymore. So the door is always open somehow. Mm -hmm. right? And this is the reason why many big companies invest more into detection. Because they know they have to open their gates mm. because of generation Y, of cloudish environments, and so on. Usually, you you used to have ninety percent protection. But my role as well is to ensure that people can work right with the coolest available tool on the market, like Google or whatever. And you need always data protection to be uh, compliant with data privacy topics. Yeah. So big companies. They shift the budget from prevention more into reaction capabilities mm -hmm. and reaction as well. So, 33, 33, 33, right? And they create security operation centers, worldwide operational units, which are really watching on the screen the whole day. Mm -hmm. And they try to react as soon as possible in two and five minutes in one hour and to stop the, the security vulnerability or the breach or to contain the breach. Okay. Because they know it will happen. Yeah. Somehow. They just need to know where. Exactly. What you're saying, like you rely on the big cloud providers, the biggest are like Amazon, Google, Microsoft. And they have the time and the money, the resources for detection and reaction. Um, small medium enterprise company, they don't have the time, the money. And they have other things to do, to be honest. Mm. They have to focus on the, on the core business. Right on a scale, like strategic, on a strategic level, like how important would you say is it to the company these days? This depends on the industry. Mm -hmm. If you take the financial ones, mm -hmm. they're very aware of this problem because they're very attractive tar yeah, targets for criminal hackers. Mm -hmm. So it's on, 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 on sea level, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I work for, for a fintech company, it's on sea level because the CEO at the end is accountable. What would be your recommendation for people that we work with, for example? First of all, you need someone who is responsible for this topic. Mm -hmm. So nominate someone. If right. you don't have them in the company, would you recommend someone from outside the company? Could you imagine that this could be in the future something like a new uh, advice field service? It could be. I mean, there are a lot of many security service providers, mm -hmm. but even then you have to define the boundaries. I mean, this is also a topic for compliance mm. because of separation of duties, right? Because the security guy should not be able to, let's say, reset press rights all the time. It's an admin task. Yeah. And the admin task or, or the admin itself should be not able to look, look into the log files all the time. Yeah. Or in the, in the security sensitive logs. Yeah, definitely not. Yeah. So, and they should outsource mm. because they should really focus on the core business. Would it be possible to hack your computer today? Probably yes, why not? <laughs> with a zero day exploit, with something new on the market, sure. But the point is, in my case, the important data is in the cloud. I have a password and two-factor authentication. And there's nothing on the computer. Oh, why? Same here. I could <laughs> throw that thing out of the window and I would still be able to work. So that's a good point. Yeah, thanks a lot. All right. Thank you.